Welcome back, Noble Heroes. We return once again to Amythia, where our characters are joined by Isaac's brother, Michael, in the Golden Hills, where they await the arrival of the prison, the Ilium. Uh, they have plotted that the character, or that uh, the nobles of Selenox apparently have been gifted vampirism by Satan's hand as a means to unlock their more malevolent and malicious side. Um, turning them into uh, significant threats. And the party is up on the hills, taking a long rest. They have just gotten a long rest, um, but it costs them a chaos. Um, and we will go ahead and begin with the characters hanging out. Uh, let me get what the main party is doing. Um, Hero seems to be quite active and talkative uh, in the Isaac Crowey brother circle. Um, and uh, Hero is asking him about what he does in the city and uh, why he needed to contact a deacon. Um, and you all will learn that uh, Michael is a priest of the church in the city. Um, not a cleric. He doesn't have his brother's powers, but uh, he is. He's like a, a holy man. Powers. Um, so, what is Juniper up to? No, start with her. What is Euphemia up to? <laughs> um, well, for one, she'd probably be talking to Johnny Assam about just like her family that's in the city still and, and asking stories. Um, and then she did want to chat with Red briefly, yep. if there's a time for that. <coughs> okay. Um, so, if Juniper was also going to talk to Red, I'm going to let her do it first, because she did okay. notice the uh, sniffling. Yeah, earlier. as soon as this clears up, that was what her intentions were. Unless so. you sure. both would like to go at the same time. We might awkwardly both approach at the same exact time. Up to you. I don't you, know. You approaching as a as a front rather than just one person. She wasn't um, approaching because of sniffling or anything like that. Gotcha. Something separate. So. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said red, and then Johnny, and then red. Mm -hmm. um, and what about Isaac? Um. <clears throat> Isaac is still sticking very close to his brother. Um, they probably would have spent much of the night kind of catching up with each other. Um, his brother has told him about what he's been doing in his life. He tells his brother the story of his uh, quote-unquote child and some other interesting things that have happened on his travels. Um, Michael is startled by Prongor's lack of presence in the current group and asks about him. Um, <clears throat> he's running some errands. It's not very often I see myself back in my stomping grounds, so I thought I'd, well, have him get some things done, but also maybe spend some time back where he's most familiar, for his own good. Uh, as soon as you say, have Prongo run some errands, he's going, you're, go, you're going to get an expression from your brother that seems to suggest that he believes that you are... Uh, accessing some of the more the less savory elements of the city once again <clears throat> uh isaac kind of shoots him a similar look back and is like you don't have anything to worry about trust me hmm. your brother rolls inside on you <clears throat> i'm sealing up an evil layer so technically that's something good you know yeah uh, but what are your intentions behind it to not get caught. To make sure no one accidentally gets in there. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> all right. So does Isaac believe himself uh, benevolent in the current situation? Or at least not with evil intent? Uh, with the layer thing? Yeah. I Isaac. His intentions is sell his, his honest, His honest emotions are like, I'm doing this purely out of self-interest. Um, but he doesn't see it as a malevolent thing. He sees it as... You know, neither neither a good or a bad action. It's just something he's doing for himself. All right, then your brother is going to look at you and sort of meet your eyes, and he'll give a nod that says he accepts you at your word. 
But listen, after we part ways, anyone asks, you never saw me. I don't want any targets on your back. And if you happen to see mother and father again, see if you can get father to take that bounty off my head. I asked him why he put it on in the first place, after I learned that it was there. He says that he just wants to see you, but... I have half a mind to send him a letter, offering to uh, come home for the holidays if he takes it off. Would you? I was you? thinking that might be enough to convince him. If he did, truly, I would consider it. Even knowing what your friend over there said, he nods towards Jennifer. I'd be afraid of what he'd up that bounty to if I went back on my word. Considering the esteem of your companions, I'm not sure any size of bounty would be enough to capture you. And your own significant power. Maybe not. But there is some small part of me that is giving grief by thinking of both him and mother in duress over this. Why are you still carrying around that old stick? He says. You need to get something fancier. Mm. The gourds just don't fit you. <clears throat> I've grown attached. Hmm. Any person who's in the group and hears that, that <laughs> snorts. He, he nods. And says, You know, if we're turning over a new leaf, you certainly have a lot of the old tools. <clears throat> that I do. I have a hard time pulling myself away from them. He's going to grasp you brotherly by the shoulder and say, I'm glad you're trying. It's been a long time since long. I've... It's been a long time since we've talked. I hope it's not too long before the next time. All right, so um, Isaac and his brother are talking. What about Jennifer? June is going to roll up the pe the plans and then just kind of stick them up her sleeve and then walk over to Red. All right. As you approach, you're going to see his head tilt slightly, noticing you. Hey there, Godmother. Greetings, Tim. Nobody calls me Tim. That's why I did it. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Because everybody deserves to be more than just their title. And everybody remembers Tim. I mean, uh, excuse me, she says everybody remembers Red. Well, you know what I mean. I was Red before I put the mask on. He says. You were Tim before you became Red. If you prefer, it makes you uncomfortable. I will call you Red. You know, they used to call me Red because I would blush so hard when I got drunk. Just kept it afterwards. I haven't had a drink in a long time. Well, enough to where my face got red. What uh, brings you over? She pauses and she goes, Are you all right? Huh? Yeah. Fine. <clears throat> Big mission. Must be nerves. I know that we are not particularly close. You know barely anything about me, and what I know of you is mostly hearsay. Um, I wouldn't say I don't know anything about you. You're the kind of person that gives a dragon a nice dance. Helps out for almost no reason. Summon meteors from the sky. I'd say I know a decent amount. I mean, specifics. But 
that very distance makes it a lot easier to talk sometimes. You wanted to tell me something? I'll listen. June glances around. Is there anybody near us that could actually hear us? Uh, do you want there to be? Not particularly, but I don't care either way. He's off all a little bit by himself. I can't begin to understand how your fate affects you, or the relief you might feel for the moment that it's gone, or the sacrifices it has caused you to have, to make or be made on your behalf. But... The woman I was gonna marry got married to someone else. Because she didn't remember I existed. What's, uh, what's it like? You got that kind of fairy tale love going on. Just was wondering, you know, what's it like to always have that there? Rafe is my one constant. The only one I have. You're not. I'm very sorry to hear about your loss. Yeah. And I'm very sorry for her as well. I guess it never really would have worked. Maybe I'm just fated never to be loved. Like that. What was her name? Doesn't matter. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone. I understand. She takes his hand for a moment and squeezes it. If you ever do want to talk, I'm willing to be a little ear. She pats him on the back as she gets up. And before she turn, like before she goes, her back is to him when she says, "I'm not the only one." Not Red, the only one. Who would be willing? She glances over at Harper and Faleen and Opt that he should talk to them as well. But she's very specifically doing it while she's not looking at him. Well, at last. Exactly. But no. Good. Fine. You see, after you have aided Jania, uh, and she's like counted on several hands all of the names of her uh, sort of urban hillbilly cousins. You. I know she's been missing home, so I think. I hope she got to tell some good stories. Yeah, she talks about them like playing street ball uh, in like an alleyway near her home. Um, that was faded. So that it would echo, even though there was nothing to echo off of, really. It was kind of too narrow for that. Um, And she remembered the... Of the ball hitting on the wall. You look over and see Jennifer sort of lay her hand on a contemplative red. How unapproachable does red look at this time? He just looks like he's musing because he has a mask on. What about his body language? Yeah, does he seem like hunched? It. Does he fe- seem... He looks... Um, basically thoughtful. Yeah, she'll approach them. It's 
It's not like you'd... popular with the pretty ladies tonight. Oh. Well, that's a good start to this conversation. Why are you over here all alone? I thought you'd be enjoying this time a little bit more. You got a sweetheart, Yuffie? Oh God, this this is bad. Don't do it. What? No. No. She says. To be honest, I've always been so mired in my worries about my family. I don't know how much else I had to give. I don't know if it's for me. I was the exact opposite. The moment I could, I ran away from home, wandered around for years and years, completely forgotten. Just wanted to grab a relationship. Just way before I met you. That's really all I ever cared about. Just trying to find something to hold on to. And something to hold on to you. That's harder. But, um, got some bad news. One of those relationships that I really wanted to work out didn't. Wait, she said, is this the one you referred to? Oh, yeah, I did tell you about that, didn't I? You did. Yeah. Her. Her. Why didn't you ever... Why didn't you ever ask me? And then she holds her hand up. You know I could have taken this from you. I know you use it to fight. I know your fate has been incredibly important to this world, but it's also taken everything else. Why'd you hold on to it? Because I do have one consistent relationship. Well, sort of a big group one. Yuffie will glance over at Harper's crew. He nods. And that group has a ticket. You want to ride that coach? You pay. And I thought I could make it work. Keep trying to make it work. Is this a ride you want to ride forever? I don't know. I'm a pretty old man at this point. You're still quite charming. Wait till you see this ugly mug. He says. My best friend in the world is the most beautiful woman I have ever seen to me. Bali. Oh. Yeah, she's pretty cute, I guess. She's also covered in scars. Yeah, but they're like cool heroic scars, he says. They are a bit cool You don't have a nose, acid burn scars. That's fair. I guess... I think I've made my bet with that issue. I don't know if I'd be all right with such a big change. 
after so long. I live my whole life around my faith at this point. It feels weird for it to be gone, like a really annoying brother. I mean, imagine if yours was gone. She looks down. Even a curse can be part of you. Just look at Jennifer. Guess you're right. Although to be fair, if the world wasn't what it was, and my fate disappeared tomorrow, I would be ecstatic. It's what I always really wanted. So. He's going to look up. I mean, you sense a tone shift in his voice. And what if fate released you from this prophecy? Would you leave? If it happened like Roland? Yeah. What would Euphemia Carr do if she had no duty here? I don't know. I knew before this. My crew and I still have a mission and a path of our own. But it would feel incomplete. I guess it's not really about the mission. I. It would feel wrong to not see it through with this group, with these friends. Well, then my answer is the same as yours. Yeah, I had a feeling as I was saying it that it would be. I wish I could have lied. But I think you deserve the truth. Yeah, I mean, I'm so eloquent. You know, all I gotta do is steal your words. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the thief. I knew you were gonna say that. I guess I just... My choice aside, I'd hoped for better for you. I'll well, keep it up. Maybe someday things will work out. Shisha. Yes. Keep she passing on the shoulder, shoulder, baby. Isaac, after Good. keep him going. A long talk. Everybody is going to settle in for the night. In the middle of the night, Faelene is on watch. Everyone, wake up, she says. Look! She points up, and a very fast Ilium is approaching dead in the middle of the night. Whoa. Like a day earlier? Yes. That's not good. Oh, that's you not see good it side. slightly listing to one side. I guess that explains why it lists. He says, Everyone, get out the equipment! Harper's going to immediately pull out several grappling hooks. Everybody starts rushing around. Um, Shadow is going to bound up towards Euphemia and present her back. Can you fly up to it? Yes. Okay. You fit me a jump song. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Hero is going to be handed like a really heavy grappling hook. Um, and Toss walks to you. Hold him securely. Your brother is going to turn towards you. What's happening? He says, bleary-eyed to Isaac. Uh, Isaac's going to kneel down by him and say, It's been nice, brother. It's time for us to leave. He says, Is that the Ilium? You're going to the Ilium? We are. And don't tell anybody that. 
by Michael, or by Mazrian. <laughs> Be careful. By myself! He says. <laughs> I will, don't worry. You be careful getting back. He's going to look over at Phalor, who's like looming behind him. Uh, he goes, uh, take care of him. As... Can freeze? No, he's, he, I see his eyes moving. Oh, okay. Um... Phalor isn't going to make any gestures back of comfort. Uh, but as the Ilium sweeps in, you're going to hear the displacement of the air as the structure, which is a very large, rather stout-looking building, um, on a floating rock like an aisle in the middle of the ocean. Um, it sort of curves down cone-like at the bottom with a rough, spiny surface. Uh, as it wow. nears, you're going to hear a sort of... As the air begins to blow, a great wind around it carries it aloft to the sky. And then... As several grappling hooks and shadow is going to soar upwards and kind of playfully stomp them into the ground. Before shadow takes off, June walks behind shadow, turns into a fairy, and then slinks up into your pocket. If she can hear her while they're going up, she'll probably like ask her about, "Hey, if we can bag any immortals while we're in there. It'd be really helpful." Bag an immortal. Uh, it, walk says. June is looking at you up from your pocket going, I beg pardon? You know, the whole deal with... Did you actually tell her about yes. that? Oh! Everybody knows about okay, says, I forgot about that. Mama, put them in your bag. <laughs> we'll work on that, Walks. She looks at you and goes, Well, I mean... Seems like a good opportunity, can't. She have you says, figured out how you're going to do it yet? I help. I take bag, the bigger on inside, and I run at them with it. He's so cute, it hurts sometimes. Okay. It is a good idea, but I think it's perhaps not the way we're going to approach it, she says. But we'll keep that one in the in the wings just in case. Okay. I change into one of them with magic. He says, I make them confused. You imagine a short version of yep. the Butcher of Aragoth running at him? Yep. <laughs> they would be confused. <laughs> they would be, wouldn't they? She goes, uh, Don't worry, Mama. I strategize. I'm concerned. I if he says. <laughs> yeah. She goes, perhaps just long-range spells for now. That would be helpful. All right, Isaac. It has been a while since you have activated the gemstone's ability to help you levitate, which makes, f f like, you basically arm over arm lift yourself slowly up the rope with no need for your legs as the gemstone carries you aloft through the air, bending gravity to your will. Um, Harper, Phalene, Opt, Hero, Red, everybody else, um, are all just shimmying up the ropes uh, till they reach the top and climbing up with a bit of heavy breath onto the flat fortress-like island of the Ilium. You see ahead of you, between two large boulders, an imposing door made out of adamantine. Uh, it looks impenetrable, like the entrance to Pendulum. Um, and as it stands silently and resolutely with the wind whipping about you, you feel a certain chill go up your spine as there is something distinctly wrong in the air. Does it usually feel this way? No. You begin to feel the island slowly shift from wedging right to wedging middle and then left. You also look around and were expecting some manner of defenses on the outside of the building. 
there are sentinel drones, faded guardian-like entities, but like golems that float about, that have fought off armies before. You Where certainly are the didn't drones? expect all of them to work. Well, that is right that we were worried. Is Harper up here yet? Mm-hmm. Can you see anything weird about the fate of this place at this point? It's locked down tight, he says. Fake cords are knotted at the door, just as they always are. Uh, it's going to take me a while to hack through it. I mean, well, we'll watch your back. He's going to pull out two daggers and head up towards it and sort of like... Like he's chopping the celery very quickly. Um, and you're going to see like chink, 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 chink as little bladed uh, carving attacks begin to lance against the doorway. Uh, for Harper's fate being the ability to cut anything, it is a very slow cutting process on this door. Um, he appears to be aiming for a person-sized circle in the uh, left doorway. Death by a thousand cuts. Is he just trying to cut which part of its... Like he's it's... just cutting like a hole in the door. He's... A physical, literal hole. Okay. Gotcha. Um... Just because he can cut anything. Got it. As he begins, you realize it's probably going to take an hour or so for him to get through this door. Um, give me a group perception check as you all wait. Do you want us all to roll? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. This seems like this would be a door that would be permanently in the Ilium forever, right? Or this would be a hole he's making. No, because uh, it's only temporary. Or, or... No, it would be a at least semi-permanent fixture. How did he get him before? The door's opened. Mm. Perception. 22. 22. 19. 12 All right. plus 8. 20. Um, so. I rolled a 17 and you still beat me. Even though Harper <laughs> is just gone up to cut the door, know. there is like a giant gong-like structure inside of one of the boulders that you could ring to alert everybody inside the LEM of your presence. But normally you ring that gong and then there are six faded guards that live inside. Very powerful men. Uh, their fates sort of bring them to the Ilium, and then they become part of its permanent structure. Not immortal, but they're, they're like gifted might and uh, exceptional capabilities. And they control the, the whole prison. Um, Wouldn't someone have been out to greet us already, though? I mean, if he is busting a hole in the door? Not necessarily. Normally. Uh, the defenses of the, the Ilium would normally take care of such a thing. Can they receive messengers? No, they cannot. Can there be any other contact with them other than going up and ringing the gong? No. Okay. The prison cannot be teleported into or out of, and no communication, magical or otherwise, can get in or out. Gotcha. Unless its fate is failing and, you know, something gets through. Um... So you could ring that gong and hope that maybe one of the guards is available to open the door if you wanted. But Harper apparently doesn't expect that that's a good idea and has just started cutting it open. I am inclined to agree with Harper on this front. I don't want to let every single person in there know that... Well, we don't want to let whatever intruders might know or the reason why this place is listing. Right, right, right. We don't necessarily know for a fact that anybody's out or not. Then you are able to gather what spells and items you wish to equip at the moment. And as the grand hole falls, uh, Harper's going to move up with um, with Red and Opt as they like run forward and then Shadow actually has to help them slowly lower this giant brick of adamantine to the ground without letting it pound on the, the, the dirt. Um, as this door opens and you look inside, you're going to see uh, what you know are everlasting flame sconces 
inside that are glowing, letting a little bit of light trickle out into the darkness. And you all step inside. And we will call the session there for the time being, Noble Heroes. Thank you so much for joining us. We will get into the Faded Prison, the Ilium, next session. Do try this now.